Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. Now on today's episode, we're gonna be installing a pretty cool customized gauge for David's E39 M5. Now that car, being a supercharged car, it's obviously got a lot of stuff going on with it that's outside the parameters of the standard DME. And there's a few things that David wants to be able to keep an eye on while he's driving to avoid blowing it up. Now, you may have noticed I walked up to the shed. The plan was Dave may have it already installed. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so obviously this thing taps into quite a few different um, sensors. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and the idea that David has got with it, it's going to be able to replace the three, actually, sorry, four aftermarket gauges you've got in the center there into one nice unit, but also flash at you if there's something wrong. Yeah, it does a lot of things. Did you sort of explain that it does actually plug into the... Yep. You did? Nothing? So it, it does actually talk to the CAN bus on the car, so you can monitor all the things. If you ever, if you watch the logging video of this, um, how important it was to, to do the logging on this car, so you can see so many different parameters that you don't have access to on you know just normal driving. So the gauge actually connects to most of those, all the useful things anyway. And on top of that, you can also input aftermarket sensors like the boost gauge, because obviously this car doesn't have anything to register any boost. Um, AFR as well, so you can connect those gauges all, so it does everything all in one gauge with a pretty cool looking LCD screen. Okay, so this video, we're not going to get into the features too much because it is pretty damn feature packed. We're going to do a bit of an overview of the installation. Now this comes from Russia. Russia. Now this has absolutely no sponsorship whatsoever, and the dude that makes them said don't film the install. <laughs> so we thought we're going to film the install. All right. Um, Let's work out a plan and we'll update on what we're going to do. Cool. You helping? You got it worked out for us? Thanks, King. Well, we think we have a plan, don't we, Dave? Yeah. Okay, sorry about the weird lighting, but we're trying to show you what's going on and it seems awfully dark in the show at the moment. Um, so the gauge is made up of two main components. We have the display right here, which is a touchscreen display. That connects careful with it into this brain box right here and this is what connects to all the sensors now I should have actually said it in the intro but the dude that makes this he makes them sort of fully customizable to whatever setup you've got in the car one thing that happened when David ordered it the guy hasn't specified or he hasn't requested any information on David's current sensor setup so the gauges that are in this car at the moment are some cheaper I think I just found the brand, they're free power. Um, and he's got, this one doesn't work, but that's oil temp, oil pressure and boost. And obviously they have the sensors for these gauges. Now, what we're not sure on at this point is if the sensors that go to those gauges is gonna be compatible with the format that this brain box wants to use. Sorry about all the terrible camera angles. And one thing we're gonna try and do is get rid of this not so pretty mess of wiring but what we do need to do is tap into the boost gauge signal which i had it's this one here so this wire here goes to the boost gauge i cannot get a wiring diagram for the free power gauges so what i'm going to do i'm going to plug this into the boost gauge at the moment this goes to the sensor in the engine bay then we use a multimeter to work out which is positive which is negative and which is the signal wire then we should be able to connect that into the harness that comes with the gauge, and then we'll see if we get boost signal. That's the plan. That's the plan. Now, all of the stuff that taps into the original car wiring, so here we have the CAN bus connectors. They are brilliant, super easy to tap into. That one there is the power. It gets the power through the dash cluster, and he does provide all instructions on what pins, on what connectors to tap into, so that's great. The only thing that's a bit sketch is gonna be tapping into the aftermarket gauges. This input, this wire here is for, the black and red is for an EGT sensor, an aftermarket EGT, and the blue is for the signal for the boost gauge. Now, not boost gauge, AFR, AFR gauge. Um, we will still need to be running the AEM gauge, and obviously it converts the signal from the O2 sensor into a voltage output. Well, that's the plan. But luckily, we can get AEM wiring diagrams online. So that one should be easy, assuming the scaling for this is the same. Which it should be. We'll find out shortly. Yeah, the only, the only thing that caught me, I didn't realise when I bought the gauge, is obviously these cars do have an EGT sensor, and this gauge covers, you can plug your EGT sensor into the gauge and view it on the display. Mm. 
Um, but it wasn't specified that it has to be an aftermarket EGT gauge. That's, that's the only thing that sort of caught me out. Anyway, I reckon let's do some testing. In fact, first thing we're going to do is test that boost sensor in the engine bay. So I'll need you for that, Dave. Let's Bye. plug this one back in and I'll meet you in the engine. Okay, hopefully everything's going to be seen by the GoPro, but we've got the horrible multimeter. I say horrible, it just seems really dicky, this multimeter. Okay, so we see the car is at 11.9 volts. She needs to go on charge. Just here is the sensor or the connector for the sensor for the current boost gauge. And I can see it's got red, black, and white wires. Now I'm assuming we've got red is positive, black is neutral, and then white is the signal wire. So we just wanna see what voltage the sensor is actually running off. So I'll connect that one to the red wire, that one to the black. Okay, we get five volts or 4.9. So that means the aftermarket gauge is outputting 4.9 volts to power the sensor. And this one is, okay, yeah, right. The white wire is the signal wire. So what we can do now is check that the voltage coming out of this new gauge is a five volt power to power the sensor. Then we should be able to be no, well, we'll know if it's gonna be safe to plug it in anyway. Right, back to wiring on the inside. Okay, so following the supplied instructions, we have the power wires hooked into this white connector, and then the CAN bus, there's actually four wires that go to the CAN bus on the gauge, and it actually intercepts CAN bus signals. So we've got those wired in. I'm gonna reconnect the cluster back up, put it all back in place, and power it up, and just see if it turns on. So, all right, let me put this back together, and you'll see it in a sec. Okay, so the cluster's just sitting there, but I think it's gonna to need to be in place for all the CAN bus and things to work. So that's powered on. The light, hey, the gauge is here. Okay, so it powered up all right. It's getting signals for everything, which is interesting because nothing is actually connected any at the moment. Brightness settings, warnings, okay. Something we haven't spoken about, which we will get into. It'll actually control the M shift, uh, like the temperature lights for the M. You can get it to do stuff. All right, so we're getting there. I'm going to try and tidy the wires up a little bit more, and then we'll start working out how we can connect up the other sensors. Okay, guys, it's actually the next day, and things haven't gone to plan. Who would have thought when you're doing weird stuff with a car? Um... Now, it's not the dude that's created this gauge's fault. Uh, he is Russian, and there are no instructions, and his instructions are broken English, and and I feel like a bit of a knobhead, but then you've got to remember, I did do a DCT swap two weeks ago, so this isn't complicated, but it's just been very complicated. Anyway, let me fire the gauge up, and I'll show you where we're at, um, because I actually think it's broken. So... When you turn the car on, you get, uh, well, basically it instantly links into the CAN bus. In fact, I might record on my phone. There we go, we can see the screen a lot better. So it does connect in with the vehicle's CAN bus and it's picking up the coolant temperature, the oil temperature, voltage, it will do RPM. Now the exhaust value here is for an exhaust, um, an EGT sensor, an aftermarket EGT sensor. We thought this was gonna tap into the E39M5's factory exhaust gas temperatures, exhaust gas temperature sensors, but it's not. You do need an external one. Not the end of the world. Uh, intake temp is getting through the CAN bus, and that is obviously accurate. Boost, AFR, and oil pressure. These are the three aftermarket sensors that we were expecting to use, and what we've been trying to calibrate, and I thought we were getting somewhere, but now everything's just gone to shit. Um, but let me show you a few quick sensors. If you click on oil down, if click on the right-hand corner, It'll actually do a graphing function. Um, I don't know how it's going to do mass airflow on an S62, especially when it's got an alpha end tune. But it will graph ignition timing. And we did have a play with this last night, and it did actually work. Um, wheel speed sensors. Now, the car, sorry, not the car, the gauge always thinks the car is doing two kilometers an hour. Not sure if that's something weird. And it was doing that last night. I'll just go to that one. Oh, yeah, it shows the four wheel speed sensors always reading two, so I'm not sure if something weird's going on there. It'll show cam position angles and the target, that sort of stuff. Um, again, it'd be nice once it's all working, just to check a few things, make sure Vanos is working. Then we go back to the home screen. Um, 
Now, where we got stuck last night, now the dude in Russia, he was actually pretty quick to help. So we've got the AM, uh, AFR gauge, and that outputs on this little wire here, which has been disconnected and reconnected about 10 times, a zero to five volt signal for a reading between 10 and 20 on the AFR. And we did actually get that working last night. What we do to set that up, if we go to external sensors, and then we'll sensor calibration, on these values here, the first one, it takes the voltage coming in from the sensor. So in this case, if it's reading 10, it will output zero volts. If it's reading 20, it will output five volts. It times that voltage by two. Then you offset this value here, which is add 10. So if it's outputting 2.5 volts, it times it by two, which will be five. You add 10 and that will give you your AFR of 15, which is smack bang in the middle of 10 and 20. So that makes sense. That one worked perfectly. Where we ran into trouble was setting up the boost and the oil pressure, and that's because this car has these free power, they're Taiwanese, but they're pretty crappy gauges in it, and we couldn't get the scaling for the boost or the oil pressure sensor. No biggie, I was trying to work it out, and I spent ages basically trying to get the right figures by making some changes and you just can't get there. By using the, the multiplier and the offsets, you just can't get it to work all the way through. Ended up pulling the sensors out, trying to work out what they are because these gauges being of a cheaper brand, I figured they're probably using sensors out of something else. It looks like the oil pressure sensor they use is actually a, a GM, like an LS sensor. Physically, it looks the same. I ended up finding out what oil pressure what the GM oil pressure sensors output between, they use 0.5 volts up to 4.5 volts for I think zero up to 10 bar of oil pressure or 150 PSI. Put those values in and oil pressure was on point last night. Well, the reading on the gauge was on point. It made sense and it matched the readings that we used to get on this gauge. Um, but I couldn't really find out with the boost pressure sensor. Um, it's a bit of a weird looking gauge. The closest thing I can, sorry, a weird looking sensor. The closest thing I can find is the AEM boost pressure sensor. Um, physically, the AEM one is a little bit bigger and it's got swappable fittings where this only has a push on type fitting. Um, and all I can put it down to is this boost gauge here, which you can see is reading, will go up to 45 PSI. So that means the sensor's got to be a five bar map sensor. I ended up using the, wanting to use the values for the AEM map sensor, and that's what we have here. What I've got, I've basically converted the AEM values to, actually it might have been Zytronics. It was one of the, the popular brands anyway, but I converted them from PSI to bar, and we've got those settings here. Unfortunately, this morning we've come in, and the gauge seems to be dead. Doesn't matter what we do, we can't get it to read any values from boost, AFR, or oil pressure. Sometimes AFR will sit at 10 volts, at 10, which is its minimum, input with zero volts but yeah i've tested all the outputs and inputs going to all of the sensors everything seems to be fine it's just the the actual gauge isn't working um we have emailed the dude in russia that's made the gauge we'll wait to see what he comes back with hopefully it can be reset or something um as it sits the gauge is wired into the cluster it's where it gets its power from it gets its power from the cluster it intercepts CAN bus in the cluster and then we've just got it wired into the two well basically the oil pressure sensor in the engine bay and the boost pressure sensor and then this one wire going to the AFR gauge um yes I can't work out why it's died but in the interest of keeping you guys in the loop this is what we've wasted two days doing. <laughs> Joys of it all. Um, one thing that has come about from doing all this, um, the battery charger that we bought is actually putting in the work. You can hear it humming away in the boot right now because we've had the ignition on for about 18 hours straight and everything has stayed powered up really well. Um, I'm going to end this video off here. We will probably, basically this gauge, all the CAN bus features work and it does some cool stuff with and again, once it's all working properly, we'll do a full video on it. But it actually takes over the shift light. Actually, if we can... So if I turn this off and on, it controls that light up there. And you can actually set that up so that when you hit a certain RPM, this will flicker at you to let you... Don't... It's flickering anyway in the camera. Uh, it basically just a shift light for you. It, the, the gauge also comes with an external shift light here, which you can mount anywhere you want. Tested that, that is all working properly, but for some reason,
just the external the external sensors, which is like the most important thing we need. They've stopped working. Anyway, if we do work it out, we will update you guys. If not, we're probably still just going to fit this up and use it for its CAN bus features for now. Um, it was $1,000. It's a painful amount of money for a gauge that's bit meh. Bit meh. It's all right. Anyway, we'll end it off there on a dismal note. <laughs> The realities of trying new things. All right, guys. I think this car needs a full standalone ECU, um, which would just do away with all this crapness and give it some proper protection and some proper tuning. Does anyone know of an ECU that will run an S62 safely? And all the Vanos? Hit us up below if you do. All right. We're going to end it off. Thank you. Catch you on the next one. Say bye, Dave. Bye. Say it with enthusiasm like you haven't just wasted two days. That's what you have is all the money. Yeah, the money. All right, see you guys.